Hey, we're back in the studio here with uh, Nolan and Jake from Game Changer Athletes, and we've got a great show for you. We're going to be talking about coaches today. We're talking about the 10 strengths of a Game Changer coach. Uh, this is part, well, I don't know which one is number one, two, or three, but we're on part two <laughs> of, of their three-step program here. So uh, this is my numbering, probably not there, so... <laughs> It's all good. They're all important. It all works the same it all way. Works, yeah, so. It's all important. There you go. So today we want to talk a little bit about uh, coaches and how uh, their role is defined within uh, what you guys talk about here as um, the effective nature of, of a coach mm -hmm. on the athlete's, you know, growth and mm -hmm. development, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to read them off. I'm going to read all 10 of these. Again, you can go to GameChangerAthletes.org and find this. Mm -hmm. uh, number one here, you got create a healthy culture, rethink leadership, model effective communication, leverage and reframe failure, set boundaries, play the long game, define yourself and your path, uh, develop individuals holistically. I like that one. It's not about you and expect excellence mm -hmm. so again the drawing board right right <laughs> it's a lot of content right yes it yeah, is a lot of content. that yeah. is and there's a lot of depth in this content nolan mm -hmm. i mean how do you guys get through this in a yeah you can't get through this in a short amount of time right yeah it's so it's not easy, easy being a coach there's so many demands mm -hmm. right whatever setting you're in whether it be a club setting or or a high school and we just feel we feel for the coach uh, mm -hmm. that they don't have a ton of time to cover these things. And so mm -hmm. if they want to bring us in and, and have a, a workshop or any type of uh, format mm -hmm. where we can just take one topic and help and help explain, you know, what uh, what that means to us and how they can be a better coach. You know, we feel that's part of our part of our role. Uh, so, yeah. you know, excited to talk about a few of these. But uh, again, it's just it's not easy being a mm -hmm. coach because your focus is on the field. Mm -hmm. You have oh, X man. amount of time. Mm -hmm. to prepare for a game and, and work on skills and drills. So meanwhile, we have the time to, to look at these things, analyze them, and, and approach kind of the, the all-important uh, you know, soft skill, leadership skill side of sports. Being a coach is hard. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. And, I mean, we've all coached. I, I coach at Westminster Baseball, and um, – a big part of what we do with our coaches and, and we're part of a couple school districts where we do workshops with the coaches is, you know, they need the time for encouragement to, mm -hmm. and, and being built into telling them that, Hey, you're doing a good job, you're doing a great job. Um, no matter what anyone says. And, you know, you, you put a lot of time into this and it doesn't get seen. Uh, you're away from your families. Um, you're you're with these kids when you're in season, 100% of your time. When you're not with them on the field, you're putting practices together or getting ready for games. Like when people think like, "Oh, you're a coach," mm, that's not a very hard job. That's a hard job. Yeah, that's yes, a hard job. Um, and they don't get paid very much. And that's a thing that um, people miss is the time commitment and the financial piece that they're getting to it is not much. Right. Unless you're at the professional right. level, right? Which that's a very small number. Yes, it is. Um, so you know, we we love to take a lot of the time with these coaches um, and build into them and and let them know that hey, they're doing the great they're doing a great job and they're important. So that's awesome. That's all because you know you started off with create a healthy culture, and I think mm -hmm. that that right there just kind of speaks to that, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. You know, you're important. You're important to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The kids around you. You know, it's it's and giving them that thought process, you know, stay there because it is creating a healthy thought process Absolutely. within the whole dynamic of coaching. Mm -hmm. First off, I want to talk to you guys a little bit. You know, again, we're, we're kind of staying. I'm, I'm a big I'm big on communication. And you have <laughs> here model effective communication. And so how do you model that? What mm. is that? You know, I think the the way you said that there. What is a model of effective communication? I can start. Uh, go ahead and I got stuff too. <laughs> yeah, we'll go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure we got this. the same thing. So Right. Uh, so, you know, 
an athlete's impressionable, right? A, a coach is in a natural role model position. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, for instance, if you're always talking down to the athlete, if it's always a one-way dialogue, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you'd be surprised how many athletes are going to start to think that's the way it should be, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And so you have to be cognizant of the fact that you're always being observed, right? And these are, and these are individuals who are going to learn how to communicate partially from from you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, opening up a healthy dialogue and putting both people on, you know, there's a time to be a coach and say, this is what you need to do. These are the expectations yeah. of the team. You know, that that's its own thing. But uh, there's a lot of times where you need to be on an even keel with, with your athlete mm -hmm. and have an open door and make sure that they have the opportunity to express themselves. And also, there's other aspects. I mean, it's allowing the athlete to be a leader within their team, mm -hmm. you know, so it's encouraging them. How can you communicate to uh, the defense or the offense or, you know, whatever faction of the team, mm -hmm. right? Because there's so many opportunities, mm -hmm. but you have to, you have to embrace that. You have to make it a goal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that one kind of hit home to me because the last podcast we did or webinar, um, I had a mom ask me that her son, um, it's very laid back, mm -hmm. um, very good. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good ball, ball player, pretty athletic. Um, but she was like, how can he be more of a leader on the field? Right. And, um, you know, by his words and his actions, you know, his actions speaks, speaks louder than words. So um, I think it just starts from the, starts from the beginning. And we've said it a million times is, you know, you, you ask good questions to the athlete. Um, you know, Nolan said, uh, there's a time for development. Uh, there's a time to correct something mechanically in a pitcher or shooting mechanic or hitting the ball or anything like that. But then it comes down to, um, you know, there's, there's a lesson from really anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just asking those good questions, connecting uh, with the athlete. And, and Nolan said it again, it, they, you know, if you create a, a one street dialogue, then athletes not going to get anything out of it so you know at the same time you're in a leadership role but um you're wanting to deeply connect with these athletes and and, and um do you think that when you're when you're talking if you're modeling effective communication and you guys keep talking about asking good questions right mm -hmm. because we're not clairvoyant mm. a coach is not a mind reader mm -hmm. and so do you really know what the athlete is thinking? And the only way you can really know that mm. is to model a question to where you believe you can effectively get the response you're looking for mm -hmm. to help the athlete, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it is definitely, I love the way that you guys put that uh, model effective. And if you're going to be a coach, I think that that, that has to be a huge factor yeah. in how you do because to me communication starts the whole process mm, mm -hmm. it is the the stepping stone to to everything within leadership culture all that because if all three of us are just sitting here staring at each other mm. not gonna be much happening right no. we won't know people are just like well these guys are idiots yeah. turn that off That's right right so everything starts with the communicative context of mm -hmm. the relatable context of what we're trying to all move towards. Mm -hmm. Right. So modeling that communication towards the person to get the response, not that you're looking for, mm -hmm. but what you need in order to help the student athlete. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's huge. That to mm -hmm. me is huge. So I, I love this part of that with mm -hmm. coaches. And I think, I, I hope that coaches are thinking and looking at that stuff. And uh, because you put here, establish a system that encourages athletes to be the primary drivers of communication. Mm -hmm. So the only, and you guys all know from the time, <laughs> we talk about this all the time. Justin and I will be out filming at a, at a tournament or something. You got these 9, 10, 11, 12-year-olds just having a big time talking, flapping gums like nobody's business, right? Mm -hmm. You turn the camera on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because there's something, that mechanism, that they don't know how to relate to that. Mm -hmm. 
So finding that that relatable communication, I think, is is huge in getting the athlete to come That's back sad. and really trusting the communication, right? right? Yeah. Trusting that system that says, I can say this. Yeah. I can communicate to you in a in a way that uh, we can relate to each other, and I know you want to help me. Yeah. And I right. think that's a huge, huge thing here, guys. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Yep. So let's uh, let's let's move along here. I think. Um, well, just to finish off here, it says give your athletes a voice by uh, inverting the traditional coach-driven communication model. And I and I think those things. That's kind of what we're looking at. So coaches really. I think this is huge part of it. Um, I'm going to take a big leap over to this last one because it, these, and these are all things that when I read this that stick out to me. So th there may be things that when you look at this as a coach might be different for you and for sure. things that are different, important to each person. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking the question, so I get to, <laughs> I get to do this. <laughs> but uh, at the end here, expect excellence. Help athletes see what they're capable of and expect nothing less. When they fall short, be the first to pick them up. Now, I think that's an interesting thing to put there because I don't know that we, we, we really do that, especially in our, our, our culture today where mm. everybody's supposed to be the same. We all get a trophy. Um, <laughs> I said that out loud. I know. I know that's not <laughs> necessarily. We're, we're not going to get into that, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But here you put expect excellence. That's that's a tough thing sometimes. And mm -hmm. how do you how do you create the trust to where they they believe you can expect that from them? Right. Yeah. We're not afraid to say that. Right. So our, yeah. our mission is growth and development. Mm -hmm. You don't grow unless you get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Right. And and so providing stretch goals to an athlete, just like when you become an employee somewhere, you're going to have something that your immediate natural reaction is. I'm not crazy about it. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. That, that's a human instinct to see something and say, eh, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. That's when you grow, right? Yeah. And a coach is in a unique position in a, in a let's face it, you know, a safe environment at sports, right? If you're, if you're eight, if you're 10, if you're 13, um, it's not life or death, but it's a great proving ground to figure out, you know, do I want this? Am I willing to work for it? And here's somebody that's going to help me get there. Uh, but it's, you know, there's no sense in putting the time and energy into it to just to just be average that's yeah. the way we feel and we're, and we're not afraid to say it so you know it's it's about achieving your full potential it's not mm -hmm. about hitting for a certain average it's not about uh you know being better than a teammate or an opponent uh you're there to win but it's about reaching your potential and the best coach is the one that assesses everybody's level and they figure out you know the goals for this athlete they're different than my than my next guy mm -hmm. uh, and and i'm going to help you get there but you know, that, that expectation has to come pretty early and has to be clearly communicated. Right, you know? right, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm good. good. Go ahead. You know, uh, let me... Let I me... was going to jump in, but I'll, I'll jump in in a second. Yeah. No, go ahead. Please jump right in No, there. it's okay. It's all right. All good. All good. <laughs> I want to... Because you, you, we'll, we'll, we go back and forth, and I think this is tough because, you know, it could be confusing to people at times because we mm -hmm. talk about wins and losses, but any sport is based on wins and losses. Otherwise, there's no reason to keep score. Right. Right? Sure. So I think one of the tough things is, is how do we build an understanding of what winning is? Mm. Would you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Fair so point. if there's an expectation of winning, what, is, what does that mean? Is it simply just a result on the scoreboard? And personally, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? No, um, I agree with that, uh, or I don't agree with that, but um, I coach at Westminster, like I mentioned before, and, you know, we have a we have a meeting every year and right before our season, and we just talk about expectations of the season, and uh, we expect excellence. Uh, and that's the, the program that was created by Rich Van Gils, who was the coach there for a long time, and I played there, and you know, he expect excellence from us. And that wasn't just the result on the scoreboard. That was um, Rich and, and my dad and Andy Bennis and a couple other coaches that we had that, um, you know, showed us what it was like off the field to work hard um, to get that result on the scoreboard, whether it was there or not at the end of the day. 
um, but they expected it from us. Right. And that's what we try to communicate, effectively communicate at the beginning of the season is, um, you know, this is what we expect out of you guys. And this is what, you know, we want to see. And if you're a player that is average and you're playing behind a player that is got a lot of potential, um, you need to be doing the work outside of just practice. And that's what we want to see. And when we see that, you're going to get an opportunity to play. Right. Um, right. And and that time when playing time comes, that's a whole other topic is, is playing time. But <laughs> right. um, the other part that hit me in here was when they fall short. Um, and uh, that's a, one of our big topics with athletes is harnessing failure. Um, and we'll get into that one here in a little bit. But um, there's some time there as a coach when the athlete falls short um, to be that role model. Yeah. Um, to really f- have an opportunity to connect with that athlete uh, on a personal level, uh, emotional level, not just the sport, but um, really dig deep in there, ask good questions, um, and and bring them up. Sure. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what a great coach does, right? You might, yeah. you might be... Uh... You have to be firm and fair and you have to set expectations, but you're their first cheerleader. You're the yeah. first one. <laughs> yep. You know, you're you're you want them to succeed, you know. Right. So uh it's playing both sides and we just yeah. try to provide those reminders to, to coaches of what that yeah. looks like when it's when it's done right. Yep. Uh, yeah. but there's you know, there's no reason to be afraid of excellence. Yeah. It's just a matter of how you define it. Mm-hmm. And if everyone's pursuing yeah. their own individual excellence, I mean, if you're injured and you can't play for four weeks, for sure. you can be excellent to your team and oh, your yeah. coach by rehabbing, keeping yourself in shape, eating right, doing everything you can so maybe you can play a role down the road. Yeah. That will contribute to team excellence. Mm-hmm. So I, I think people just get rubbed the <laughs> yeah. wrong way. It's, you know, well, that, 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 sounds, that sounds harsh, you know, mm-hmm. but I think that's the purpose of a workshop is to break that down and say, what does excellence and success right. mean? It Define is, it. Yeah, it's a good it, question. It, it may not be making it to regionals this year because yep. objectively everyone agrees we may not have what it takes. Mm-hmm. might be the following year. Maybe it's rebuilding. But this year, excellence is going to be this. That's it's effectively definition. setting goals to meet sure. that challenge, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. It. And, you know, when you get into that, what you guys are talking about is really just the attitude of the individual. Yeah. What yeah. kind of attitude are you going to have? And right. I really believe personally that's what winning is Mm -hmm. because results are you as an individual what's your attitude and how are you effectively uh bringing that attitude within the scope of the game of the business of whatever you're doing in that moment because we all know we've played you lose uh, baseball's this way crazy if we're just we just talk about baseball you know one play Boom, a hit, three, two, you tip your hat. Mm -hmm. That kid just made a diving catch, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Well, for instance, here's a story, uh, because both my kids went to Fort Zone Mold East. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think it was 2011. They haven't been around a long time, but they're playing Francis Howell in the district championships. Mm. Okay, and I think 11 was one of Coach uh, Perkins' championship years. Yep. East had uh, the bases loaded. Bottom of the seventh, I think it was, whatever. It was, yeah, Justin's over there. Give me, he's, uh, he remembers this. <laughs> but I, I don't even remember who's up. Smoking line drive, base load. I mean, it had cleared it. They win, whatnot. Kid from Howell snatches it out of the sky, game over. The pitcher? I don't think it was a pitcher. Oh, okay. No, am I wrong? Triple yeah, play, that's no right. Outs, oh. No outs, <laughs> triple play. Game, and that's how it ended the game. Wow. I mean, you have to have the right attitude oh as a person gosh. to deal with that. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And the coaches went up because that just rips your heart out. Oh, my gosh. Right? Yeah. But you can't. you got to tip your hat to those guys. Mm-hmm. You have to. Mm-hmm. You have to tip your hat to those guys because yeah. they made one more play than you did. Yeah. Right. That's, That's what makes it. the game fun, right? Yeah. Because there's a bunch of other people that are doing just yeah. what you're doing, trying and competing. <laughs> yeah. Just happens to be in the opposite direction. Yeah. That's what makes it fun. And that's what 
a game changer athlete thrives on. Yeah. And yes. uh, there's there's a great opportunity for a coach on the losing side to oh. have some very powerful words for his team. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it's all about right there. Absolutely. And I had that same exact experience as a young coach. Uh, it was like my first year coaching at Westminster. We lost to get to state on a bases. Uh, uh, yeah, he walked the guy with the bases loaded oh. on a tie ball game. Oh, man. And... It's just like, I, I I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> and like, right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, I mean, I was a young, immature coach, and um, I I didn't even know what to say. I don't even remember what I said. But <laughs> yeah. and I, and I understand. But that. there's yeah. an opportunity right there to be a, a like Nolan said, an amazing role model. Yeah. To these coaches, uh, and again, coaches, parents are facilitators coaches are facilitators to these athletes yeah. in growth and development and that's what we try to push to these guys is um they're they're playing an important role in these kids lives and uh mm -hmm. i was part of fca growing up and there's a stat out there that you know a coach will positively affect a kid's life out of they uh, they positively affect i'm trying to can't remember the words i'm saying but <laughs> more they so have the most other. yeah yeah than yeah. anyone else Right. A coach, a coach right. does. So right. um, they have the most influence yeah. Uh, yeah. Than, than anyone else. So yeah. you're at an opportunity here to, to make a positive impact. And, uh, you know, that's what that's Are what you prepared? As a coach, are you prepared for that? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And, I, I, yeah. and honestly, we can, we can sit here. I know at times in my life, in, in situations like, I haven't been prepared. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think this is where, and we'll finish this up today, guys. This is where you as a coach, I mean, take that time. Get in touch. Gamechangerathletes.org. Get it. Get these guys. You know, get some workshops, some coaches together. I think that we need coaches that are ready for those opportunities. Because yeah. I don't care what you say. You know, <laughs> situation like it rips your heart out as a player. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and you got to be there as a coach to help them understand life's not over. You know, yes, did it hurt? But here we we can move on this way, and this is how we learn, and this is how we understand the game of life. Right. That's it. 100%. Yeah. Well put. Yep. <laughs> so, guys, again, thanks. And uh, Thank remember, you. coaches, take a look, and uh, we'll be back with a final segment with the athletes here uh, on the next uh, episode. Stay tuned.